Hello, my name is Carlo Bergamini, Dynamics 365 Business Central and Dynamics Nav Project Manager and Senior Consultant here at Western Computer. In this video, I'm going to talk about customer item pricing. Customer item pricing can be used in multiple ways based on your company's needs. So let's go take a look. Within Business Central, I'm going to go directly to my item list. I'm just going to choose one random item. I'm going to go to Navigate sales and prices. Here's where we have multiple options of how we want to set specific pricing. My sales type, I could choose it by customer, by customer price group, for all customers, or for campaigns. Let's just look at customers for now. So when I choose customer, I'm going to select a specific customer. So let's go to Alpine Ski House. So I'm setting up for Alpine Ski House number 40,000 that purchases item number 1896-S, orders a piece of it. I'm going to leave minimum quantity to be zero, which really means any amount. I'm not setting any minimum quantity. So zero really is if they order one, they could order a thousand. So we're going to leave it at zero for now. And we're going to set up our special pricing for this item to be $12. So now for this customer that buys this item of one piece of it, one or more, we'll get it for $12. What if you sell it in different unit of measure? For example, box. You sell by pieces and then you also sell by boxes. Again, minimum quantity, I don't care how many they buy. But if they buy it by box, it's going to be $30 a box. So that way you have things covered where if the customer orders it by box or orders by pieces, the set price is there. Let's look at as well, go back to pieces, but if they order a certain amount of them, so let's just say if they order 10 or more, they'll get it for $10 a piece. So you see our differences here in this first line where at minimum quantity being zero, which really means now that we have this quantity, minimum quantity of 10, they're going to get the price of $12 per piece for this item compared to down here for this item for that piece. Or if they purchase 10 of them, they're going to get it for $10. So $12 between one and nine, 10 or more, they get for $10. And we'll do the same for boxes. Oops. So customer 40,000, a box, and if they order five boxes, they're gonna get it for 27.50. So you see, you get some flexibility there. Let's look at customer price groups. If I don't want to be customer specific, I could set up customer pricing group. And here I have levels. So I could set up based on a customer level. So if I have customer level one, I'm going to apply this level to the customer record. We'll see that in a few minutes. That buys this item, a piece of it, and again, I'll leave it at zero. And for level one, we're going to stick to $12. If my customer price group is set at level two for a piece, they may get it for $11. And I'll set up my third level. Set it at ten dollars. So now I have the option that I set up based on my price groups. Level one that purchases this item will get it at twelve dollars. Level two, eleven dollars. Level three, ten dollars. Now, as I mentioned, now that we set up a customer price group based on levels, I'm going to go to 
my customer records. And let's just choose the very first customer. And this is where I would set up the price group for that customer. So now that I'm on customer 10,000, what level does that customer belong to? I'll just say he's at level three. So this customer is a level three customer. This level, this price group will follow customer 10,000 onto the sales order knowing that it's a level three price group. So that means that the price for that item that we set up will get level three pricing. In this example, it was $10. Go back. And that's where we set this up. Because that customer is level three, for this item, he will get a $10 price. Whereas other levels will get 11 or 12. Of course, you could set up special prices based on the number they purchase. So we could set it up the same way. I also have another option of just saying all customers. So I don't have to be customer specific. I don't have to have a price group. I could just say for all customers that buy this item by piece, I'm going to sell it for $12.50. And I could also set it up based on a period of time. So let's just say my start date's 1120, 123120. So now I'm basically saying for all customers that buy this item in pieces, you can get it for $12.50 for that time period. And if they buy a box, then the box is going to be $28 for this time period. So now not only do I have set up for all customers that buy this item in this unit of measure, pieces or boxes, we have a set price. And that set price is only valid for the year of 2020. If a customer buys this item before 1120, this number will not kick in. Or if they purchase it after 123120, they will not get this price. This price is only valid between our starting date and ending date that we set up. That's customer price. Very similar, if you're not into special pricing, you also have line discounts. And you will see, we pretty much have the same options here, based by customer specific, customer discount group, instead of price group, we get a discount group for all customers or campaigns. So let's go back to discount groups. And in this example, if it's a large customer, that buys this item in pieces, and let's just say they buy 10 of them, then we're gonna give them an 8% discount. And I could also set it up for a specific, let's just say they wanna buy something with the first in Q1, the first quarter. So we could just set it up to be this way. If they are small, oops, this kind of group, so if they're retail that buys pieces and they buy 10 of them, maybe because they're retail and they're not a large company, they deal with quite a bit, we're going to give them a discount, but not as much. So we're going to give them a 5% discount and we're going to do it the same time period. So this is discounts only valid for the first quarter of 2020. So now I could see that based on whether my customer is a large account customer or retail, and that buys this item in 10 or more, they're gonna get an 8% discount or a 5% discount. And just like we'd set special price group on a customer, we're gonna set this, this discount group on the customer as well. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna go back to our customers. And if I go to tray, You see here, before we were a customer price group, now we got customer discount group. And we're going to say this customer is a large customer. So now that we set in, let's just say he's level one. 
So now either he could be set as level one customer and a large account customer. So now he would get special pricing, special discounts based on what we set up within his record. So you see, we could set up pricing or discounts by item, by price group, by customer for all customers. So you see there's quite a bit of flexibility of standard out of the box feature of sales pricing. Thank you for spending some time watching. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and stay up to date on all things Microsoft Dynamics. Feel free to contact us if you have any questions. Thanks again.